most of has been our 15 minutes since the motion, and that's about what it took. It looks like the traffic has stopped and looked at by the so your time will be right. very good guess. Uh, good afternoon. I'm glad to see all y'all here today with this wonderful, beautiful afternoon outside that we could all be enjoying ourselves outside, but we're here trying to take care of the business of government. This is the county convention of the Hines County Republican Party. Excuse me just a minute. Go outside and there's an agenda out there on the table. Let's get that passed out. There it is. Get everybody out of the place. I'm sorry about that. This is the county convention of the Hines County Republican Party. Every four years, the Democratic and the Republican parties reorganize themselves from the precinct level through the national level. This is the first step in that process. Well, actually, this morning was the first step in that process. Uh, our precinct caucuses were held this morning. Now, this afternoon, we're conducting our county convention. The next step will be three weeks from today when the Mississippi Republican Party will hold its state convention here in Jackson at the Hilton Hotel. I do, we'll get to that. But hope, if I don't answer later, let me know when it starts at 10, I believe. During the state convention, we'll break down into congressional district caucuses. One of our functions here today will be to elect delegates for those that will represent us at the congressional district caucus and at the state convention. So the next step in this process, in this function, that the people are most aware of, and that is the national convention. And it will be held in Cleveland, Ohio in July. That's the one everybody focuses on. But the process all starts this morning at 10 o'clock and the way up. Right now, while we're waiting on a report from the Credentials Committee, which it sounds like they're about through, which is good news, this year is a lot quicker than previous years, uh, I'll try to explain quickly what the process will be this afternoon. You're getting an agenda passed out now. Uh, before we get into all that, let me clarify one thing. I want everybody that's sitting in front of this rail to have a green armband on. If you don't have a green armband on, you need to be back behind the rail. Except for me, I didn't get mine when I came in. I, didn't <laughs> I just realized when I said that I had on my arm and I don't have one. Uh, our credentials are out here, but somebody probably ought to get me one. <laughs> if you're behind the rail and have a green armband on, please move down here. If you're behind the rail and you're an alternate, you must stay behind the rail unless your delegate from your precinct is leaving, tells us that they're leaving, and then we will take their badge and give it to an alternate. So, the alternate sitting in front of the rail Unless you're an officer of the committee. Look at me. I tell them they got to have one, I got to have one too. You can check and make sure I was elected. <laughs> so, first, while we're waiting for the credential committee, which we've got to have so we know exactly how many people in time to vote and who they are before we can get started with the rest of the business. I want to clarify a couple of things and clear up a couple of misconceptions that may exist about this process today. While we will be electing delegates that will attend the state convention, those delegates that we elect will not affect our state's votes for the party nominee. The ones we elected this morning, in some precincts we had people wanting People would be a delegate here to have to declare who they were for. First off, nobody in this country has to declare who they're for. I don't care if this is a nominating process, people still have the right to their secret ballot. If they want to declare, they certainly can. But we had that process some this morning, and that's not the basis of how you get here or move forward. The delegates from the National Convention are based on, the votes will be based on the results of the party primary that we held on May that March 8th. Our party rules require 
that the delegates from Mississippi to the National Convention will be cast in accordance with the results of that primary. So I'll go through a somewhat convoluted, complicated formula that the allocation exists, but that formula exists, and that's how the delegates go. Nobody in Mississippi got more than 50 percent, so therefore they're apportioned. Only people who got more than 15% get delegates. That meant it was Trump, Trump and Cruz to get delegates. Then you go through the formula. Trump gets 25, Cruz gets 15 by the 40 delegates from Mississippi. That requirement lasts through the convention until the delegates are released by their candidate. There are many people, and there's been a lot of information, a lot of discussion that is for the first ballot only. In my reading, and it can be subject to other people's opinion. But my reading of the rules say that they're bound for the first ballot. Then if you go on down to Rule 8, it says they're bound until the candidate releases them. So, it doesn't matter who we send to the National Convention, frankly, about how they're going to vote for Cruz or Trump. Because 25 of them going to be told to vote for Trump and 15 are going to vote for Cruz. But, that doesn't change the fact that we're here today. We're all here because, number one, we want to be Hillary Clinton. Gosh knows if we had the alternative, we'd rather be Bernie Sanders. <laughs> but uh, and Casey won't do it. Well, we're not here. No comments, please, ma'am. Number one, if you're behind the rail, you cannot speak. Number two, if you're in front of the rail, you've got to be recognized. We're not here campaigning. We're here to take care of business. Everybody has their own opinion. Thank you. We will not want. So. Many people have been stating that delegates from Mississippi to the National Convention are bound by the first ballot. I just try to explain that. That no one receives the required magic number of, a, this year's 1,237, then the delegates can vote who they want to. That's, I believe, erroneous. Mississippi rules trump on that issue. That's a bad word. Mississippi rules guide and control on that issue. I didn't mean that, I'm sorry. <laughs> All that is to say that while who we elect today is important, and I know a lot of y'all in here want to go off and go to the state convention and the national convention because you want to vote for somebody, there's a lot more steps between now and then. As I said earlier, there are 40 delegates from Mississippi. Three of them already chosen, the chairman, committee man, and Peter Wong. They go to whoever they happen to be. So we elect 37. Uh, and that process will be done at the state convention through the Congressional District Caucus and the State Convention. One more point I'd like to explain, which is while the delegate selection process is not a stair-step procedure, one does not have to have been at the precinct caucus this morning to be a delegate to the National Convention. One didn't have to be at the precinct caucus today to be a delegate here. One does not have to be a delegate here to be a delegate to the State Convention. You can come in and out at any part of that process. This isn't like a college world series. Uh, I don't know if people from Baylor realize that they play baseball out in Omaha. That's just the state man You know, where you gotta go from win this one, then move up and move up. So it's not a stair-step procedure. And a lot of people operate on the assumption it is. So just trying to clear up some issues here about the next one. And I'm also waiting for a credentials committee report. Uh, Delegates to the National Convention can be elected no matter where they were in the process today, this morning, today, or next Saturday, three weeks from now. If there are any questions about this, I'll be glad to address them when we get to that stage about electing delegates. Now, if anybody's got some questions or wants to discuss it or say that what I'm saying is wrong, we'll be glad to have that discussion we would get over that stage about talking about delegates to the national uh, to the state convention. Now I'd like to move into the actual business of this convention. I'm told that I think Chad, y'all ready to make a report? I'll give you about ten seconds and have you come up here and give a report. Sure. Alright, so I thought I was told that they were about ready. I see Chad, so I guess they are ready. Uh, so I want to change the agenda step and go ahead and get this report first. Oh, we can do that first. That's okay. We'll do that. Okay, we'll stick to the agenda. Let me see. 
Didn't have one. Thank you. Uh, uh, for anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Pete Perry. Uh, anybody that doesn't know why I'm the one that's sitting up here talking, because right now I am the temporary chairman of this convention. The, uh, the rules of the state party and the county party say that the, tip, the current chairman of the executive committee presides as the temporary chairman until we let the permanent chairman of the convention, not of the executive committee, but of the convention. I'm B.J. I've been chairman of the Hines County Republican Party here for the last four years. Actually, the last eight, I don't know. Uh, and I will stay here until we elect the permanent chairman down on the agenda. Uh, right now, I want to ask that we have Brother Jeremiah Robinson, who is a delegate from the Road Park Precinct, I believe, uh, come up here and lead us in the invitation. While he's coming, I'm going to ask Linda Wilson, if you would, to move on down front and join me on the stage. Wherever you is Linda out front? Yes, sir. Go tell Go. There she is. Okay, she's here. She's here. Uh, Jeremiah is coming up here. Would y'all all please rise? I'm going to ask you to remain standing after the invitation while Linda comes up here. Linda is the current president of the Highest County Republic for Women, and she's going to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. So, Brother Robinson. Yes, sure. Those are my heads. Father, we thank you for all these who have assembled together to take care of your business, business men and women called by you to attend this caucus. And Lord, we ask that you guide us and lead us and direct us in the way we should go. And Lord, hold nothing against us as we make our decision. Be guided by your spirit. And we ask that we bless each and every one that come today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Brother Robinson, for your invitation and Linda for helping us remember why we're all here today as we celebrate our democratic republic that we all hold so dear. I want to take just a minute, while I'm still up here presiding, to uh, introduce a few folks who've been helping us today and will continue to be doing so to help us get this convention on place. Uh, we won't thank Jackson State for moving its graduation to today and changing it to 3 o'clock and calling the traffic down for everybody else. We, we appreciate it. The registration process that was going on out front was done to a large part by several different people. Uh, I don't even know that I know everybody that was involved in it. Uh, but Lynn Wilson and President Bill were out there when I'm here. We had a couple of TR uh, Teenage Republicans, I didn't think about it, college Republicans. Over the last couple of years here in Mississippi, the college Republican organization has grown and gotten big and much more active than it has been in a long time. It's got a large membership, more chapters, a lot of chapters at community colleges that we haven't had. Uh, they've also created an amazing number of teenage Republican chapters around and about. Uh, Hunter Foster is the current president of the teenage of the college Republicans, he's not here today because he's in his home county, Lincoln County, with doing his county convention down there. But he's been there. Oh, we do have the president of Bill Seth's chapter here with us, and I found out today the fraternity brother glad to met that so uh, uh, some other special people. You saw earlier Linda Wilson, who is a delegate from Precinct 16. As she led us the Pledge of Allegiance, and as I commented at the time, she's the current president of the Hines County Republican Women. We also have here somewhere Anna Royston over here, and Mary Nell Collin down here, who have been the other presidents over 
this last four years since our last convention. And we probably have some more other past presidents in here, but I'm at least over the last four years have been the presidents of, of, the, of the Republican women. Uh, I got a special group I'd like to thank, and it's everybody in this room that's been a poll worker for the Republican Party in our primaries. There are a lot of people in this room that have gone out and we need poll workers. In Hines County, we've got 110 precincts today, we've had 115, which means every election, every primary, we've got to have 500 or so people gathered up to conduct those primaries and then get them trained and then get them out there and doing that work for very little money and sometimes a lot of abuse. So all y'all have been co-workers, and I don't care if you're in the back or whatever. If you raise your hand, stick your hand up. I want to give y'all a round of applause, but I appreciate y'all. I don't say that. I don't say that. I don't say that. You've been the co-workers. I want to thank y'all. To me, that's important because that's one of the jobs of being the county party we have to put on the primary. We can't do it without a whole bunch of people like this. So I want to thank y'all for that. Uh, we got 110 precincts. They go from Cayuga down to the southwest to Pocahontas in the northwest, and to Precinct 78 over the northeast, and Terry down in the southeast. And that's scattered in between. And that's about 60 miles across, no matter which way you drive it. And it takes a lot of folks to do it. Also in the convention today are several people that have been willing to work in other ways and some important people that we have around. It's been the first time in a long time we have here in our county as the voter, the governor, who cannot be here with us today, is out of town, the field Bryant, who votes right up the street at the Doyle Belgian Library Precinct 1. Secretary of State Delbert Holdman, I don't think is in the room, his son is. But uh, I, I think he is not here today. Of course, he's been a Heinz County resident forever. And of course, our home that we're all very proud of, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Bill Dunn. Who is here today as a delegate from the Pine Haven Precinct. Thank you, Bill. Uh, we're glad to have you with us, and we're glad you sent your members home. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> Uh, we've got a few other elected officials, Mayor Phil Fisher, uh, back over here, Mayor Clinton. Uh, Mike Morgan's not with us. He had been a wedding down on the coast this weekend, a family wedding. Uh, Ashley Foote, down here, Councilman David Foote. Former supervisor, Tony Greer, over here. Uh, but we're glad to have y'all here with us, too. Our state party chairman, Joe Nossip, is also a Hines County resident. He's not here because today this is going on in 82 other counties. And so he's down at the state party headquarters dealing with any issues they have there. And so we're glad to have him in our county, but he's just not here with us. All right, I'm going to ask Shad White, who is the chairman of the Provincials Committee, to tell us how many delegates we've got. Sure. Uh, so we had 98 properly credentialed delegates who came forward. We had one dispute involving Precinct 39. That dispute was only involving an alternate delegate. So the Credentials Committee is making the recommendation to this body as a whole that we appoint Floyd Smith as the alternate delegate in Precinct 39. Short answer, 98 credentialed delegates. 98 credentialed delegates. And we have a list of the precincts at the end, so we have any yes. questions about it. You'll have the list. Okay. I move the adoption of the Credential Committee report. I'll accept the motion to adopt the Credential Committee report unless there's any questions or objections to it. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate your work. All right. Uh, the next order of business, I believe, now that we know who is able to vote, I would wait before we get started. I'd like somebody. Who do I have over here? Nathan, I want you. And uh, somebody over who, who, who you got here on the end? Yeah, you. Not you. I want y'all to count the people in your half and your half. Because I want to see if we have 98 people sitting down here in this area. So if you would count the people in this section over here, and if you count the people in this section over here, real quickly, if you will. And we've got one. Here we go. 
Clinton C3. Definitely. We don't have a copy of the rule. Well, we'll get you one then. Uh, I think we will. We'll try to. For those in the back that didn't have a copy of the rules, they want to take a minute to be able to read. We're going. I will tell you that they are essentially the same as what we have for several commissions and are basically copied after the state commission rules except for what doesn't apply to a county. 